Hi, Eric Lenask. We're here in uh, San Jose, California for uh, WebRTC Conference and Expo 5. Uh, joining me today, Sajil Hussein from uh, Cafe X. Sajil, thanks for uh, joining us. Uh, good to see you again. Thank you, Eric. Thanks. Thanks for having me over here. So as I said, this is our fifth WebRTC Conference and Expo. You, you've been with us uh, uh, for a number of shows now. What kind of trends have you seen from uh, when, you know, when you first joined us here to, to what you're seeing here or what you expect to see here this week? Amazing trends, right? I mean, WebRTC is absolutely on a path of uh, progression. You can just see last last week there were some really good announcements made. Microsoft's finally signaling that they're going to be supporting ORTC and WebRTC. Uh, we've seen some movement from standards bodies in terms of supporting codecs, uh, both uh, VP8 as well as H.264. So all these are positive movements. The big thing for us, um, uh, being Cafe X, we've been working with WebRTC for almost two years now. We're seeing finally a lot of deployments happening, enterprises are embracing WebRTC as a technology. And so, and you can see from this conference um, as well, the, the number of people coming to the conference, real enterprises coming uh, to the conference and, and showing the amount of interest they are. I mean, all of that is very, very positive movement in the right direction. So when you say you're seeing, uh, you, you know, a lot more adoption from the enterprise community, are there specific uh, types of enterprises, specific uh, verticals where, where you're really seeing uh, the interest level peak? Absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the usual suspects, finance, healthcare, insurance, retail, higher ed, all of these, any time where you have a lot of high-touch collaboration uh, involved, WebRTC is a sure shot. What we're seeing is that um, customer engagement is, is a big area in which customer engagement is not now just limited to the contact center. It's going beyond the four walls of the contact center as well. And so all of those are specific areas where we're seeing a big uptick, even for the knowledge workers. Uh, so I think these are all where you're going to see some really innovative case studies. We've had examples of the legal vertical getting involved as well. We've had um, inmates and uh, people in prisons now communicating with their attorneys using WebRTC solutions replacing traditional UC-based solutions. So really a whole slew of innovative cases uh, coming up. So how does this uh, sort of increase the adoption and acceptance? How is it changing what uh, Cafe X is able to do? Well, you know, the, the three pillars, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about this in my keynote as well, is uh, you know, Cafe X has pivoted itself uh, to three main pillars. Simplicity, to make sure that it's easy from a consumption perspective. Mobile, to make sure that it's not just about the web anymore, right? It's because it's you're taking into account end user device preferences as well. And then it has to be beyond video. It can't just be about seeing the other person in the video. So contextual and making sure that you're able to uh, affect bottom line changes and drive those bottom line results is really what we have pivoted ourselves about. And every enterprise that we've deployed with, we are fighting on each one of these pillars, and th therefore we've seen the adoption that you would expect. And how are those, the three pillars that, that you mentioned, how are those driving uh, so your activities, um, you know, the latest from Cafe X? Yeah, absolutely. So what we are doing is, in fact, to, uh, tomorrow we're going to be announcing, uh, we're very pleased to announce um, we talked about Live Assist, the application, which not just provides voice, video, and chat, but things like co-browsing, screen sharing, annotation, all of those capabilities. We're going to be announcing our cloud offer, Quisby, tomorrow. And this is going to be uh, in the cloud, um, all the Live Assist capability. Literally, with two lines of code, you can have enterprises, small, medium, mid-market enterprises, uh, get themselves activated. It's all uh, pay-as-you-go. You get a packaged agent console. So we're very excited about that capability. Anybody can go and try it out. You get 30 minutes free. And so uh, look out for Quisby. Try it out. And it could be something that you really, really wanted. So uh, obviously one of the, key, the keys here is, is that you're making it available to businesses of all sizes, but ultimately it comes down to why, you know, as, a, as, as an IT director or, or a C-level executive, you know, whoever the decision maker is, what's my motivation for trying or, or, or jumping into something like this? Two things, right? The first thing is mobile is hot. Mobile is absolutely hot. We believe mobile and web is going to be the face of customer engagement, and that's what enterprises are also resonating with. So once enterprises are already resonating with that, they need tools for their knowledge workers to communicate where the conversations are happening with the customers. Uh, they need to be able to light up their mobile and web apps to drive those bottom line savings. And they've seen that elevated levels of customer engagement can lead to more retention from a customer's uh, perspective, high levels of spending, as well as more revenues. So there's a direct correlation between net promoter scores, for example, and all of these other aspects. So this is what we are driving with our WebRTC-based solutions. We're seeing some tremendous impact. 
so you know one of the one of the sort of common trends that I'm already seeing here uh, th- this week is that it's uh, you know people tend to start off conversations around cost saving, but really uh, WebRTC is much more about uh, how you can make money. Absolutely. I mean, you know, one of the things that we give advice back to our salespeople is this is not a technology sale, right? This is about engaging lines of business, getting them involved early, getting to make sure that you have their sponsorship. Because then, you know, it's not about cost savings. It's about elevated levels of customer engagement. It's about driving higher levels of customer satisfaction, net promoter score, increased spending, increased revenues. When you can map all of those out with effective cost ROI, I mean, ROI models where you map out the benefits, then you're going to see the traction, right? Excellent. Uh, Sajil, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for being with us this week. Thanks for having me, Owa. Good luck.